All right, so I got requests to test out gaming on the LG C10 and the Samsung Q8FN to see what they offer and how they differ. So to the left, we have the Samsung Q8FN. To the right, we have the LG C10, and we are in game mode. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you that I am in game mode on the C10, game mode user, and then if I go into settings, I go into additional settings, AMD FreeSync Premium, and that is selected. Okay, so then we go over to the Samsung Q8FN, and then as you guys can see, I am in game mode, as you guys can see here. And then if we go into the settings, and then we scroll down to general, external device manager, and game mode settings, you guys can see I have game mode on, and then I have game mode, uh, game motion plus settings and motion smoothing on, which I absolutely love. I don't really game any other way. I think this is the game changer right here for this particular display. Um, Samsung is really the only one offering anything like this. This is game changing monumental stuff and I wish everybody would add a soap opera effect feature in game mode to take away from the jittery nature but still give you the nice input lag. Now I have FreeSync Ultimate enabled here. I also have the basic option and we can turn it off. So unlike LG, it's not just a toggle, it actually gives you different options and puts you in a little bit more of the control and how you want to use your product. Now, as I look around this little venue here, the Samsung Q8FN is actually representing the sunset properly where the C10 is not. The C10 appears blue by comparison. It's just kind of defaulting to that losing out in a lot of that luminosity and as the light goes off in the background the warm tone of that light is being captured as well and as i view from the front i can see more detail on the lg c10 and things like the headlight just by a smidge and a hair though in the building in the background i see a bunch of little tiny details that appear a little bit more flat and two-dimensional on the samsung q8 fn so OLED's biggest strong suit is that it refines those details very, very clearly because of the pixel level illumination. Now, uh, again, how much of a benefit that's going to end up being in the long run kind of depends on scene for scene and what you're looking at. But as far as gaming and gaming responsiveness and how immersive and how fun a game can be, I can tell you that this particular display, the Samsung Q8FN, is a joy to play on. Now I'm going to try to raise up the ISO just a hair. I feel like I kind of did it a little too much, so I'm going to just drop it down a bit until it looks normal. And I think that's about where it would look normal. I think maybe there. I'm not sure. Um, if any of this is not showing through, I apologize. I can only do so much to show you just what I'm seeing on my end. And we're just going to go for a little drive. Now, one of the things that becomes immediately apparent is the responsiveness of both displays. Both displays are really, really responsive. And so you're not going to have a problem no matter what display you pick. They're both going to look beautiful. Um, my big thing, though, is the luminosity is huge. So if you look at the headlights, you know, as we get going into, you know, the next generation consoles, Xbox Series X, PS5, these kinds of differences are going to be huge. You're throwing away a ton of highlight detail by getting a C10, and by not, you retain a lot of the detail that you would have otherwise had. And if you look at this scene, now that it's kind of dark, I say scene because I'm so used to movies, but if you look at this, it's, it's kind of like the C10 is crushing out more of that information where the, again, Samsung is not. So I think it's pretty crazy to see that. Now I'm going to try to open up my ISO a little bit here just so you can see that. And for anybody new to this that's like, what the heck is an ISO? I'm just talking about my camera setting that makes it a little bit more sensitive to light. I don't know how much more you can see, but I'm telling you right now, it's a big difference, like day and night difference. And again, the luminosity is just crazy on the Samsung Q8FN. Now, unfortunately, I'm doing this one-handed, so this is going to be very difficult to kind of show and illustrate and all that jazz, but I'll do the best I can to just kind of show you guys as much as I can. But yeah, the Samsung Q8FN is basically a light cannon, where the C10 obviously is missing a lot of that detail. It's a little too bright now. I have to lower the ISO to show that kind of stuff off. So if you look over there, the C10 is just darker by comparison. Now, if this information appears to be clipping, it's not clipping. It's literally just my camera is showing me zebras right now, which in English just means it's over 105% of the ideal white point that I set. So 
yeah, it's a really, really bright TV, and it, even on the lowest settings, it's really hard to keep it that way, um, you know, as far as keeping the brightness in check. But as I drive around, I have tons of shadow detail. I don't have any black crush to speak of, ultra vivid colors. The headlights pop in, and I really honestly could mistake the Samsung Q8F in for the OLED, really, with how clear and how beautiful it is. Now, obviously, neither of uh, these consoles, whether it's PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X or even any other version of the current gen console support FreeSync to the extent of having actual native support for it. I just turned on the feature just for, you know, whatever purpose that would serve. I don't know, but, you know, just trying to show you guys a little of what it would look like. Now, this scene here is just really, really dark. There's not really a whole lot we're going to be able to get out of it, so I'm going to try to go where the fireworks are going off. And then maybe we can make some action happen here. I don't know. I'm just trying to speed things along, so to speak. And that is a big tree we just hit. Again, racing one-handed, not as easy as it sounds. Now, one of the things that I noticed just looking at both displays, the LG C10 is not as hazy as the um, QLED when you get into dark areas like this. And I'm going to try to open up my ISO to show that off. The C10 is showing a lot more clarity behind the darker areas, but also it is darker, so you are missing some information there. So that's just one of those trade-offs with OLED. But I can say this is where OLED tends to shine a little bit better, and hopefully it'll show through. Um, again, it's not like the C10 is a total zero. I don't believe any TV is a 100% total zero where they have no redeeming qualities but i can safely say that for the money that they ask it is overpriced especially given you know tvs like the q90t that will work best on xbox series x for those that know don't know microsoft and um the samsung brand have a collaboration together where you know that's the tv of choice and if you don't believe me, you can look back to 2016, back when they were advertising that partnership on the KS line of televisions where, you know, it would automatically recognize and detect uh, Xbox consoles on Samsung TVs and even have the Xbox logo built into it. I mean, it was made for Xbox. That's just how it is. Now, again, I don't know how much of this is going to show. Um, you can see kind of maybe see the clarity of the uh, LG C10. But at the same point in time, it is darker, and, and that's going to affect your gameplay as you're talking about these newer consoles. I don't know how important that's going to be to some people, but it definitely is something worth noting here that when you are paying more and you're hoping for this game-changing experience, you might be a little bit, just a little bit let down in the terms of, you know, what you're kind of pulling out in some of the darker scenes, because especially on uh, games like this where you, you have so many varying levels of light. I think that's where the C10 kind of struggles a bit because it's not able to do what the uh, Q8FN is doing where it just throws off so much beautiful light. And I think that's unfortunate. But either way, it looks beautiful. I mean, on the Q8FN, C10, they both look beautiful. But the Q8FN is grabbing my eye better with these colors. I'm going to crash here on purpose just so we can kind of see all that. I mean, it's a big world of difference now, I have to lower it down anytime it gets really, really bright, but I think you guys can kind of get the idea and the general theme here. The Q8FN is just the more colorful TV, but the LG C10 by far has substantially more details. I'm making out all kinds of details like floor patterns and the little geometric things in the back. I mean, that again, I see it on the Q8FN very clearly. It's just not as clear as the, as the C10. So... You know, with ray tracing, that also plays a role, but it sucks because you don't have the peak brightness behind it. If they could figure out how to get OLED clarity and QLED brightness, I think that's game over. The first TV to do that without a risk of burning, that is literally game over. But as I look at it now, I do prefer the look of the Q8FN um, as I drive out of this little hub here. Um, again, it both feel responsive. I don't notice any kind of hiccup between either one of these displays that would make me say, you know what, uh, this is not ideal for gaming as far as uh, responsiveness. They both have good input lag. I know a lot of people were worried that the C10 would be a little bit more responsive. Now, of course, I'm not playing like a shooter or anything like that, but I have done a little bit of gaming on both hooked up like this, and you're just going to have to take my word for it. 
that the Q8FN literally held its own right there with the C10 and I could not tell the difference. I mean, after all, we are talking about milliseconds. Maybe on paper there's a tangible difference, but in the real world as you're playing, I didn't notice any real advantage to having the LG C10 versus the Samsung Q8FN. One thing I do know as a massive difference right now is as I'm driving, the stars in the sky are just so detailed and visible on the C10. And the Q8FN has it for sure, but because it's not illuminating each pixel, you're missing out on a lot of that nighttime detail. So that kind of makes it like a little bit more balanced. I'm gonna try to raise it up, but I'm not gonna be able to show you. You, you can kind of see how dark the um, C10 is by comparison. It's pretty damn dark, but it is what it is. So. Lowering down the ISO, we're going to open up our maps here, and we're just going to go to, what do you say, any random place. Maybe we start a race or something. I don't know. Um, but as you see, as this kind of screensaver loads in, I mean, there's a lot of detail on the C10, but again, it's always going to come back to that one thing that really just screws it up, and that's the simple fact that, you know, you're missing out on a lot of key details. So what do we say we grab ourselves the, I don't know, the Final Fantasy car? Maybe I want to drive in that. I, I'm really bad when it comes to picking cars. Ah, right, let's keep it fancy. Let's get the uh, Rolls Royce Roadster. Why not? It's going to have terrible handling, but why not? And again, on scenes like this, you can see the difference between the C10 um, and the Q8FN. And again, night scenes are not its strong suit as you are seeing here. I'm going to try to open up the ISO. It's struggling to find any kind of detail here. And finally now we're at a scene where we have detail. So I'm going to try to keep it at a reasonable level of brightness. Hopefully it's not too dim or too whatever, but hopefully it's going to show through. Now I'm going to do the best I can to race with one hand. It probably won't go well, but I'm going to do what I can. All right, so on the C10, it mo it looks more or less like kind of real scene. Like, it, it looks a lot better than the Q8FN on this desert scene. I, I keep saying scenes because I'm so used to movies, but, you know, it, it really is looking a lot better than the Q8FN because I'm able to isolate each color. I'm able to see every little detail, and that is looking really, really good. So finally, at long last, something redeeming that I'm noticing here with the uh, LG C10. So... While it doesn't have as much color throw, it definitely is showing me a lot more enjoyable fine details, and I think that's going to make it, especially for a game like Forza, a lot more forgivable. Now, if you're playing more colorful games like Doom or, I don't know, Ori and the Blind Forest or like Ghost of Tsushima, this might come as a little bit of a double-edged sword. Because as I look at the Q8FN, the luminosity just becomes extremely impressive as you get over horizons and uh, you know, valleys and vistas and just everything in general, like, just looks so much better. And that's where it gets hard because it's gonna come down to a personal preference. And that's why I guess you see so many people warring over which TV is better and why they like their TV the best. But the reality is it, it really is a personal preference for a lot of this stuff. And there, there can be a best depending on usage. But for gaming, gaming is going to be a little tough. I missed my checkpoint there. Gaming is going to be a little tough because both are very good at what they do. Both have excellent detail. The Q8FN has excellent shadow detail. It has excellent black levels. So I, I can't dock it for anything. And then looking at the C10, the C10 is pretty good as well. I'm not noticing, again, any real lag between these two displays. Now, that whole time that I was racing, I was kind of using the uh, the Samsung Q8FN to race, and now I'm using the C10. Seeing if there's a difference in performance, and I don't think there's going to be. I think it's really just going to be what it is right here. Oh, shit, I'm crashing again. This is really hard to do, by the way, driving with one hand, but hey, you know, I'm locking down that first place somehow. Um, yeah, I mean... I like the color of the Q8 though, like my eyes always gravitate towards the more colorful display, the brighter display with the more contrasty image, and that's the Q8FN. OLED is just like fainter details, a lot more fainter details, and I think that's really what's killing it for me. 
Um, but I do like that I'm able to see more details. So I feel like if you have a really high-end gaming console, this will be really nice to see fine details. But ultimately speaking though, for that, you're better off going with something like the Sony A8H. It has like 18 milliseconds of input lag. It doesn't have HDMI 2.1, but as we know, the PS5 is seemingly not going to do the best with 1440p. And uh, a lot of people are talking about that and some other aspects of it that might make it a little troublesome. I think everybody's expectations for these next-gen consoles are a little bit way too high. You're not getting more than 4K at uh, 60 FPS with a realistic metric. Everything else is going to be a low resolution, low frame rate performance mode, and I've said that a thousand times. Um, so FreeSync really just exists to stop the, the screen from tearing and all that, but I mean really you shouldn't even really use those modes. You should always use the 4K60 mode whenever available because that's probably going to be the best bet that you have. But either way, I hope this comparison showed you guys enough, and I want to thank you so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later.